and welcome back. I figured we'd take up the video exactly where we left off and we'll do just a few seconds apart. I just don't want to produce videos that are an hour long. Nobody wants to pay attention that long. So we're just going to talk quickly about different ways you can use the tarot. There are a lot of different ways. You might use them for counseling sessions or you might use them for more traditional divination like you see in the movies or like you might do at home. Tarot can be used for meditation, ritual, or even for games. Using the tarot can allow you, sorry, almost burned that one, can allow you to gain appropriate insights into situations or your own self, and even encourage taking responsibility for yourself and your actions. Group can al groups can also use the tarot for similar purposes. You can do it yourself, you can have someone else do it for you, or you can work as a group and everyone can participate. The idea of tarot counseling is becoming more and more common. Tarot counseling can be understood, sort of, to refer to the act of giving counsel or advice utilizing the tarot as a tool. A lot of people are doing this. It's usually done by a professional tarot reader, but it can also be done by a layman. I would recommend someone who's more experienced if you're going to use tarot as counseling, more experienced in interpreting the cards and maybe someone who has some experience in counseling itself. A little bit of expertise in both those things is not a bad idea. You have to be cautious in acting on advice that comes from the cards, however, because no matter how insightful the advice may be, the tarot should not be used independently but are, as part of a greater counseling program. So don't do something just because the cards told you to. Okay, you need to have more justification than that because what if you interpret it wrong? You do not want to interpret it wrong and end up in a worse situation. So don't act on tarot just because. Use it as a guide, especially if you're using them for counseling. So divination is considered by many to be the primary purpose of tarot today. Tarot is used around the world to receive guidance and spiritual insight. Most experienced readers will tell you that the information received from the tarot, tarot is not otherworldly at all. It is not supernatural. The information comes from within the reader and the querent. The querent, by the way, is the person for whom the cards are being read, the person asking questions. So the questioner, that's the querent. The information is from the universal subconscious that everyone is connected to. That information was already available. The tarot simply opens a channel through which that information can be revealed. I don't want to show you these cards upside down. That doesn't help. <laughs> so the symbolism of the tarot can connect to an inner, on an inner level to the subconscious mind. This means that these symbols can be used in the practice of meditation. Successful meditation usually requires a degree of visualization. With a little practice, anyone can learn to entwine their own meditations with the powerful images of the tarot. In the same way, an individual card or group of cards can be used as, a vid yeah, as, a, as the visual, visual and energetic focus of a ritual. While it is not my purpose to detail rituals right now, I might do it later. I'm not going to talk a lot about different rituals using the tarot. But you can integrate the tarot into rituals from different traditions. I may do some spell casting videos that involve the tarot later after we finish discussing the tarot itself. Stay tuned. We'll see. So you can also take a look at your own rituals for ways to make the tarot part of your ceremonies. Perhaps you might use them during a prayerful meditation or you might select four cards to represent your four quarters if your rituals even use quarters. Not everyone does. You might also choose two cards, usually the Emperor and the Empress, to represent the Goddess and the God. Study the essence of your rituals for appropriate places to integrate symbols of the tarot, and I'm sure you'll come up with something. Again, I might show some examples in the future. I'm not going to do it right now. We'd be here all night. So the tarot doesn't have to be used for anything as serious as counseling, divination, meditation, or even ritual. The tarot, with its vivid imagery, you can see how vivid all of this imagery is. It's quite, these are quite gorgeous decks, actually. These are my 
four favorites. I have others, but I like these ones the best. So the tarot, with its vivid imagery, can be used as a source of inspiration. If you ever find yourself searching for your inner muse, pull out your favorite tarot deck. Randomly select a small group of cards, perhaps laying them out in a spread. Study the cards before you and see if you can find a common theme that gives you a burst of inspiration. I do this. I'm a writer. Before I sit down to write, if I really can't get an idea, I draw a card at random, lay it in front of me, and use that as my inspiration for that writing session. It works. You'd be surprised. Games are always popular. Love games. And the tarot can be used for a lot of different games, just as it has been for centuries. Games using the tarot are quite widespread, especially in Europe, even today. The game, tarot, is actually quite popular in both England and France. It's also called Tarocci in Italy and Tarok in Germany. This game is quite traditional, based upon rules established throughout the centuries, so it's not a new game. There are many more modern games as well. Some of these are played with the divinatory usage of the tarot in mind. Many are played purely for entertainment. Others are used as team building exercises or even spiritual development. So you can play a game with a purpose or play a game just to have fun. Lots of games involve the tarot. Maybe I'll show you a game or two if I get a chance and if I have a couple people to play with me. It depends on my mood and whether I want to get a couple other people in these videos. May have to drag them. <laughs> there are many different ways that you might choose to use the tarot. Right now, though, I just really want to talk about it as a divinatory tool. That's mostly what these videos are going to be about. I might do a little more here and there. I will do videos on card interpretations, for example, and different kinds of spreads. For when you're reading tarot. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in, on other ways tarot can be used, but it's good to know that it can be used in other ways just in case you want to take a look at those ways. Like I said, I might do some spells using tarot just because it's fun, but for the most part this is about using tarot for divination. Your different spreads. Pretty, pretty, pretty. See, these are God cards. These don't exist in your normal tarot deck. But so we're going to focus on divination. I might expand on that a little bit here and there. Sorry, there's something on my card. I don't like stuff on my card. But uh, that's it for different ways to use the tarot. I will come right back, I promise. And we'll talk about knowing the tarot. Stay tuned.